So exercise physiologists are allied health professionals who work with patients with chronic diseases. So rather than acute diseases like an ankle sprain or a back injury, uh, we look after people with chronic disease like cancer, diabetes, heart disease or osteoporosis. So a, a normal session involves an assessment. Uh, this details the patient's medical history. Normally I've gone through that with the doctor or referring provider beforehand uh, so we know who the patient is and what they're going through at the moment. We talk about their treatment, the impact that treatment might have had on the, their body and uh, their life uh, and then some things that we might want to start focusing on. So some goals, what do they want to be able to do in six weeks or six months? And then how might we achieve that? Uh, we normally do some testing around how far they can walk in a certain time or their aerobic capacity in some way. And then maybe focus on their strength and find out what are their limitations, what are their weaknesses in certain aspects. And then maybe after surgery, we, we check it, we look at uh, range of motion. So particularly after breast surgery, can we improve their range of motion? Uh, is there any restrictions in, in how they move at the moment? And, and what can we do about that? So I guess about 10 years ago, we didn't see much uh, research around exercise and cancer. It was, was a starting uh, to grow, but doctors and health professionals weren't really recommending it. And over the last couple of years, we've really seen a resurgence in that, uh, a change in focus actually to, to showing how beneficial exercise can be. We see really strong evidence coming out to show improvements in fatigue levels, in strength levels, and just general capacity so patients can do things that they couldn't do before. Uh, and ability to, to tolerate treatment is improved. So patients might be able to improve the amount of chemotherapy they can take, uh, the duration uh, of treatment they can take with less symptoms. So if we can improve uh, symptom burden on the patient and reduce, uh, reduce that, then we've done our job well and we've, and we've worked with the team in, in a good way. Um, other patients uh, don't actually need any focus care at all, so they're not defined by their cancer. A lot of patients aren't defined by their treatment and their cancer anymore, they're in survivorship. Uh, and they just need the confidence they can go out and do something they used to do. That might be a yoga class, it might be uh, swimming, uh, it might be anything movement related, but they just don't have the confidence that they're ready for that when in fact they are. I think the, the term exercise is a bit scary for a lot of patients scary word, a lot of people have never exercised before. So giving them some, some really easy options just to get moving. So that might be a, a stretching program to get started, they can do at home by themselves without anyone looking at them. It might be a simple walking program, uh, they can have daily goals to slowly increase. And that for some people we say just walk to the end of the street and come back. It doesn't have to be this marathon for two hours to get the benefits. I think that's really important, just starting very, very slow and easy, and then we can progress up fairly rapidly for most people once they have the confidence to, to start moving again. Um, there's not many exercise physiologists working in cancer care in Australia. That's really on the increase. Uh, and as we see more evidence coming out for the benefits of exercise, we're hoping that hospitals employ exercise physiologists uh, to work with patients, work with carers, uh, and work within a, a team uh, in an oncology setting.